shelter in place orders, social distancing, and travel restrictions have kept people away from the hotel industry for far too long. And for hotel chains wanting to remain relevant, they've had to essentially change the business structure over the past number of months. So how can hotels better position themselves now for the future? Let's check into this discussion on this episode of Any Line, Anytime. Hello and welcome everyone to this brand new episode of Any Line, Anytime. My name is Mark Babin, your host, and as always, it's so great to see so many of you tuning in for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, as you will get from that introduction, today we're talking about the hospitality industry, and more importantly, how investing in technology now can position your property for success in both the short and long terms. Now, of course, I don't want to tackle this subject alone, as I never want to do. So joining me for this great episode, I'm very excited to welcome the general manager at Side Design Hotel, Alex Obertop. Now, having opened many properties throughout his career in the past and with significant experience in the luxury property space, Alex will be a really great source of information for this discussion and very much looking forward to picking his brain. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you here. Thank you for carving out that little bit of time. And as I mentioned, really looking forward to getting your insights on a lot of this discussion today. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mark. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, uh, you know, for your interest in hospitality, uh, because that's uh, what my life's all about. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you about, uh, you know, stuff that's going on. Absolutely. It's been a large part of my career in the past as well. So, of course, that passion for wanting it to get back to where it was and even beyond that is something I'm very strongly leaning towards and, and really looking forward to having that discussion with you today. So, again, thank you so much for being with us. So I want to start today's discussion by looking at the status quo for hospitality and properties such as yours at Side Design. Now, obviously, we're coming out of one of the most difficult times in recent history, probably more than any of us have ever remembered but it seems to have really shaken up things in terms of normal procedures and normal processes prior to the pandemic. So starting here, can you share with us what the current situation is like for uh, properties like yours? And then perhaps just to touch on how managing this whole last year has been. It must have been extremely difficult with all the uncertainty and changes. Uh, it's it's been a challenging time uh, for sure. Um, you know, the last what is it, uh, 15, 16 months already yeah. uh, that we've been uh, been in this uh, let's say somewhat misery. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, tr always trying to make the best out of it. Uh, you know, it, when we started uh, in, into this uh, pandemic, you know, we kept our hotel open uh, because we did see some potential. As a lot of properties in Hamburg closed, actually. Uh, pretty, you know, quickly. Uh, so we said, so we said, you know what, let's stay open because we have some business on the books. Uh, we've got some, uh, some requests coming in and, um, you know, and we still have some staff that we, uh, you know, we want to have uh, on property anyway. So let's, let's try this and let's uh, see if we can write it out. Of course, we didn't think that it was going to take so long. Of course not. You know, <laughs> um, the first lockdown, you know, lasted about two months, uh, a little bit more than two months. And uh, um, so then we we thought, okay, it's going to get better soon. But then, of course, we had a few, um, you know, it hit a few waves. Um, but one thing that's most, most important, uh, I think, is communicating with the team. Communicating with the, with the team also in the difficult times. And then, you know, what we are doing to help them, what we are doing for the hotel, and also being honest if we don't have all the answers, uh, because this, you know, just all, all the financials, uh, financials for the staff, you know, what did the government uh, support, what didn't they support, you know, the new uh, regulations that we had to uh, look into and really get to know, uh, because this has all been new to us. Uh, yeah. But it's, you know, we're... Um, we're looking optimistic uh, into the future. Of course, it's a whole different ballgame, uh, but I'm glad that uh, you know my entire team is back in the hotel, not full time yet, mm -hmm. but working on that and uh, you know increasing occupancy and uh, our restaurant, our metery, uh, you know, is picking up significantly as well. Yeah, and and hopefully that will just continue over the summer here and into the year. We'll just pick up and pick up and create that demand. Now, can I ask, just coming off of that point, of course with how you're communicating internally to the staff, is that mirrored 
with how you're communicating externally to potential guests or, or guests that have booked in the past and so on? Were you kind of keeping it as open dialogue as possible? Um, I think we were much more open with the staff, with the team, mm-hmm. uh, because they needed to know a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, our, our guests, you know, they were, you know, they didn't know what was going on. They, you know, they weren't weren't allowed to travel, you know, for, uh, you know, with some of the companies they worked for, um, you know, um, which I think, however, with the second big lockdown in November starting, you know, that's when it really declined even more. Mm-hmm. Um, so people were, you know, more hesitant. Uh, so after the first lockdown, it was okay. People came back, um, but of course not in the numbers that we were hoping or uh, expecting. Um, but no, the, the communication with, I guess, was a little bit different, uh, but on a regular basis, we informed them what was going on, uh, you know, through video, through uh, through a newsletter, uh, you know, just through different uh, different ways. Yeah, absolutely. So building off of the thoughts you just shared, now, do you feel like the past year has really brought perspective, uh, perhaps place a spotlight on any of the the specific processes that would have been used prior to the pandemic that maybe now you look at and go, maybe that's not the most efficient way to do that or optimal for, for both your team and for the guests. Mm. Uh, nothing really significantly that we've, that we've seen, you know, some things that make us more efficient, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we've been communicating on a digital way in a digital way through an app uh, with our team, you know, for four years now already. Uh, so that's really ingrained into their uh, natural habit already, uh, mm-hmm. you know, not getting up and reading the, reading the, um, the messages, but, you know, at least, at least on the way into work, they're already informed uh, what's going on. Um, so that just intensified uh, a little bit more. We communicate a little bit more and, uh, one thing that we also knew was important to show our face. So really using video, uh, using video more often uh, because it was an emotional time as well. And, you know, just through text or through a voice message, um, you know, you're not sharing as much emotion. So we did some video uh, and we did that to, to our guests as well. Um, not only directly to our guests, but also, you know, on our YouTube cha- channel uh, or, you know, through the other social media uh, outlets. So really embracing technology at kind of every opportunity internally and externally. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I love that. So uh, as we kind of mentioned, just jumping into this, uh, I've worked in hotels for a long time, and I know that a lot of the core systems, those core processes, once they're in place, they seem to stick around for a long time. And that's just because of the, the mm-hmm. a lot of these properties to change one thing is more than just changing the one thing. It's it's a whole waterfall effect after that. So things seem to stay in place for, for quite a long time. But again, looking at this past year, I think it's really accelerated the need to, to look at future proofing when it comes to these kind of things more than ever has before. And, and personally, I think it really comes down to the property's willingness to invest in new technologies and innovations. You kind of mentioned a few things there with just how you're communicating to people. You've obviously shown that willingness to invest and be proactive in, in these strategies. So I'd kind of just have a little bit more thoughts from you on that and looking at kind of the whole operation. Um, are these kind of the same shot thoughts that, that you share or do you think, see things from a different perspective when it comes to adopting technologies and processes? I'm the first one to really adopt and adapt with technology. I mm-hmm. love technology myself. I, um, you know, every new gadget that comes onto the market, <laughs> I'll look at it at least. And, you know, sometimes I say like, okay, let's, uh, uh, let's try it out. And I've, and I've tried out a lot you know, over the last five, six years at our property to see what, what benef- benefits us most, what makes us more efficient, makes us more effective. Um, you know, so yes, the, the communication through the app was great and you're really combining a few things uh, uh, that we before had on in, in different platforms. So uh, that streamlined a lot. Um, however, when we renovated in 2018, we already changed our lock system to be prepared for keyless entry, mm-hmm. um, you know, and uh, also doing, doing the remote check-in. However, in Germany, I do see at our level hotel, we were a five-star superior hotel, the guests are not adopting it and expecting it as much yet. Um, I think there's there's other markets or, um, you know, hotel uh, ranges of hotels uh, where it fits more. Uh, however, we're prepared, uh, but we've not activated it yet. Uh, but we could activate it within, uh, you know, with, really within a few weeks um, uh, because it's all, all just uh, ticking off a few things uh, in the software and uh, we could go live. Um, so we're not 
completely adapting to the, that yet. I think it's a good thing that we're we're able to, and we could do it pretty quickly. Um, but you know, the German market's a different market. Uh, it doesn't move as fast, and that's that's another thing that we've seen over the last year that the German market and especially uh, technology, um, the, the Germans are not you know that advance anymore they there there's so many things that they consider and reconsider and reconsider and reconsider <laughs> before they make a decision you know so it's it's not easy to really take big steps forward uh, here in germany however we're trying to do everything at our property yeah absolutely so obviously that's unique to to that market or individual markets of course will have their own nuances uh with their guests with your experience in the industry and having done it for so long when you look at the kind of blanket the entire industry if if there's a way to even do that but looking at it kind of from the most top level possible do you feel like taking this proactive approach is what properties and operators need to be doing rather than just reacting to what happens absolutely absolutely uh because if you react you're not thinking about all the little the little um you know issues that that could come up if you are proactive and start when the requirements or the requests are not there yet um you can kind of get ready for the real uh, rollout. Uh, so I would definitely uh, start to be proactive, try out a few things, what works best for you, what works out for your hotel, uh, what works out financially as well. Um, and uh, and then, you know, we, we always need to have people starting, you know, uh, being, being the early adopters in some things so that the other ones, you know, the bigger portion of the market or of the hotel business actually joins. Um, so there needs to be a few people that are running a little bit faster and being a little quicker. So I like to do that. And uh, um, there's so many more things coming up. Yeah. And I think as we kind of go into this phase of this type of thinking in hotel operators, moving away from that more traditional system, mm. uh, hopefully we're seeing a lot more of these operators think that way and it better protect themselves. If anything, I think this last year has really shown that you need to think ahead. You can't just wait for tomorrow to come because it's going to affect everything. It could close your doors if you're, if you're not careful. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievably important. Also the, the staff, the team, you know, they're also looking into that. They're looking at when they're when they're selecting their new job, their new place to work. They're also looking at okay, how advanced is this place where I'm going to? Um, because they're they're very technology savvy, um, so they kind of want to have that at their job as well, and not going back into the stone age. Yeah, that's a really nice point. It's something I guess I wouldn't have thought of. But yeah, when you look into a job, of course you want to see what they're using. Are they using, you know, computers from the 90s? Or are they mm -hmm. upgrading to everything being mobile friendly? So yeah, that's a really nice way to think of it. I love that. So I want to look at where this technology and where kind of all these technological solutions can actually help when we look at the day-to-day -day business of a hotel. Mm -hmm. I guess when we look at it here, we need to really think of front of house as well as back of house, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's... It's really both both parts starting in the back of the house. It's maybe uh, more efficient, more effective to start in the back. So get get the entire team on board. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also a very dangerous point there as well when you bring it to the front of the house. You know, it should not replace guest interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's you know, there's there's been hotels that are you know slowly uh, transitioning, or some of them are quickly uh, transitioning into a, a peopleless front desk. You know, and that's for me a no go in you know in you know in somewhat of a luxury level. Absolutely. Um, of course, in some budget hotels, you can do that where people are only there to sleep. Uh, but we're not selling beds or great steaks. We're selling emotions and experiences, and you know that's where the people uh, come into you know in the center of the attention. Do you feel like in the luxury space, a lot of that sort of advantage comes from simply giving the guests choice on, on how their experience goes and using technology to leverage that ability to have choice? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, giving them the choice to join the technology wave, let's say, but also being able to do it, you know, in a more traditional way, not completely traditional, but a little bit more traditional way. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, that's the, the entire stay, the experience needs to be adapted to the uh, individual and personal needs and wishes. So uh, that's that's a part of it. Not every guest is ready for, you know, this digital this digital age. You know, there's still people without a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Not not that many, <laughs> but there still are some, you know, you need to be ready to host them as well. 
Yeah, really market specific there. I think in certain areas you'll have very few. But again, we look at luxury, we look at budget, we look at conference hotels, totally different markets. And some people just want to fly through. Yeah. And some people want to have that unique touch point. They want to have that person service them. And of course, as an operator, you want to capitalize on all those opportunities to give them the best, the best stay. So building yeah. on that thought, of course, customer demands changing so rapidly, especially when we look now um, with maybe their comfort levels of standing in a line or, or maybe their patience is a little bit thinner than it was perhaps before the pandemic, whereas opposed to some people want to have that more interaction. And so, so much changing demands. Um, do you feel like solutions that really impact how that guest experience goes, those are the key ones for properties to be focusing on right now. We look at like contactless solutions, whether it's at mm -hmm. the front desk or on the guest mobile, things like that. Do you feel like that's kind of the direction that properties need to be looking right now? They definitely need to prepare for it mm -hmm. uh, because the demand or, you know, the requests for it are going to increase. Uh, people are going to be scared to be uh, in co direct contact or to being too close to people, even though there's these, you know, plexiglass, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these acrylic uh, dividers. Um, but yeah, there is people that are just, um, you know, a little bit scared. And there's other people that just want to have it as easy and as quick as possible. They don't want to have the conversation, you know, as we've experienced, experience over the last years there's there's many people checking into hotels while being on the phone yeah you know they're talking they they're in a conference call or whatever it is and they're checking in at the same time you know checking in through your uh, your mobile phone makes it a lot easier so uh, yeah things make it easier we got to be got to be ready for it uh, but it's you know it's it's more cumbersome than just keyless uh, keyless entry or uh, touchless check in yeah, of course, there's obviously many elements to play to it. But again, it all comes down to that customer satisfaction and that customer service, yeah. because that's the game that's always been the way it is. And that's the way it'll continue to be. Uh, really, everything focuses in on that customer satisfaction. And of course, as we know, customer satisfaction ratings drive operational strategy. It, it affects your ADR. It affects your competitive nature within the industry. Uh, having the highest scores possible is obviously key. So knowing that and, and looking at it from an operational side, from your desk, where do you see the biggest opportunity for those main touch points to really increase that guest satisfaction? Um, having the, keeping the conversation going, mm -hmm. you know, that's so, so crucial because we can get so much information from a, just a, just a small conversation with the guest and you really using the technology to make the execution, uh, more efficient and, and more effective. Um, you know, there's always going to be guests that are dissatisfied, but how do, do we communicate this dissatisfaction within the hotel so everybody is aware? Well, we can use technology for that to make that communication in the team uh, easier, um, but it should never eliminate the conversation with the guest. And uh, uh, same thing with the team. You know, communicating with the team is not just through an app. Absolutely not. Uh, we always have to have these face-to-face -face conversations. And, uh, you know, I'm part of the team. I'm not sitting somewhere in an office and they hardly see me. No, I'm going through the hotel, you know, throughout the throughout the day, you know, so, so often and, uh, you know, for longer periods of time. Because that's what's crucial. It's the emotional connections, creating those with the staff, keeping them up with the staff, reading the staff. And you can't do that with technology. No, but it can certainly help to leverage a stronger guest or a stronger guest interaction, get rid of sure. sort of the menial things and then focus on that relationship when you have them yeah. there. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So when we look at that, kind of looking at that, that first touch point, I guess, when we look at the check-in experience, uh, when the first uh, moment the guest walks in the hotel, would you rate that as one of the top areas that an opportunity to capitalize because when they walk in, obviously a negative experience can ruin an entire trip. Uh, sure. And then your entire stay is about service recovery rather mm -hmm. than enhancing the guest experience. So that, how high would you rate that first touch point when the guest checks in? Well, I, it's, it's crucially important because if, if you screw up there, you know, it's going to be so hard. You have to overcompensate. Uh, but being in touch with the guest prior to their arrival and, you know, eliminating some things that just are, you know, uh, are necessary. Um, and, you know, having an arrival time, it's such an easy thing, mm -hmm. but if you have it, you can be prepared for it. And that's going to get that, that stays, uh, you know, started on the right track. Um, so it's, it's little things that will help you so much 
if you take the opportunity. And of course, through some of the you know technology that's available, you know, a, a, an arrival time and and all that stuff, uh, or having uh, beacons in the hotel when 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 people actually come in and say, oh, this guy's uh, this this guest is currently entering the hotel. You know, just being being on top. But then having this interaction and not this transaction, we're not a transactional place to be. We're an emotional place to be, um, you know, so that, that's, that's the danger as well, that things are going to become transactional and we don't want it to be transactional. Yeah, again, it's using it as a tool to enhance the service rather than using it as a tool to replace the service, Absolutely. I think is kind of the key there. Yeah. yeah, a really, really nice way to, to bring this conversation to a full circle. Uh, fantastic. And I really do hope those listening were able to get those insights um, because I think there's a lot of them that we discussed today that really promote that proactivity. Uh, and then, like we just mentioned, using technology that's available, innovation that's happening to really enhance what you have uh, rather than replace what you have. Because we are, it, this is a people business. This is an emotional business. I love that line. Um, it, it may be transactional for the large properties that deal with simple, like we have 500 guests arriving right now and it's impossible to give a good service rather than waiting 30 minutes to check in. We'll just prompt a negative, no matter how nice that desk agent is. Um, so speeding things up and using technology to kind of get you there. And I think that helps in a lot of different varieties. So that's really, really nice. Um, but you can still make it a nice experience, even though yeah. 500 people are arriving, you totally. know, it's, it's being prepared, you know, for those 500 people, uh, you know, with other things, mm -hmm. you know, there's other ways to get things, uh, you know, flowing a little bit easier and, uh, you know, then looking into, okay, what time is it? What's the temperature and all that stuff. And Hey, is there a certain drink I can give? Uh, do I give them a nice Oshibori towel or, you know, little things that, you know, make that transaction uh, to the desk whenever the time is up uh, a little bit uh, shorter. Yeah, shorter. bring them in in a nice, pleasant atmosphere and really treat them like a guest the moment they arrive, even prior to check-in. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, really nice way to say it. Good. Uh, Alex, any final notes before we bring this thing to a close? Well, I... I, I can't wait to have more guests at the hotel experiencing th them not being scared because the hotel business has always been focusing on hygiene, you know, for many, many, many years sure. and um, not just for the last year. Yes, we've intensified a few things and we're doing some great things, uh, uh, you know, to, to make it more visible for our guests as well. Um, so, you know, everybody t has an experience also with their eyes. And if you show them, we care for you and we care for your safety and for your health uh, and hygiene is uh, is our top, is one of our top priorities you know if we focus on that and we communicate that uh, we're we're way ahead of the curve you know so, uh, to again have a great experience because that's always what people are going to want to have a great experience yeah, i love you touched on the hygiene point because hotels have been doing this for years now it's oh, just yeah. a matter of like we have to put a sign up and tell people we do it because it's it's yeah. always been happening in the background and i love that about hotels there's so much that happens in the background mm -hmm. by the time it gets to the guest it's just a pleasant experience you don't even think about exactly. the work that goes on behind the scenes so i really yeah. like how you touched on that point there's nothing for people to be worried about when they're traveling and yeah like exactly. you said for, can't wait for people to start walking into your doors again hopefully very very soon yeah. yeah oh yeah the weekends are doing it we're doing well on the weekends already good you know but just a business traveler you know they've learned how to work differently and using a lot of technology so uh, that's going to be i think um, a longer struggle uh, to get that uh, midweek business uh, back up uh, to where it's supposed to be yeah, we need conferences and sales meetings to start happening in person again, of course, for that to happen. Exactly. That's a really nice point. Good. Again, Alex, thank you so very much for joining us today. I really appreciate the the insights, the perspectives, a lot of gold today. So again, thank you so much for that. Uh, we certainly wish you the best of luck uh, as time goes on here, the rest of 2021 and into the next year. Certainly wish you a, a fantastic end, end to the year. Thank you. And thanks for having me, uh, you know, having this great conversation. I enjoyed it, Mark. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you very much. And to our audience, thank you for joining us on this great episode. Hopefully plenty for you to take away. If you are in the industry in any capacity, hopefully plenty for you uh, to walk away from this discussion with and perhaps pursue in the future. When we look at that proactive approach, I think we've really hit the nail on the head here today that it needs to be something that you do and that you're looking at actively so that you're not having to react to what's happening in the market or the global situations as we've just seen this past year. We don't know what's coming around the corner. So best to be prepared now. Uh, and really 
look at what enhances the guest experience rather than replacing it. I think that's the main uh, theory to take away from today. So again, thank you so very much for joining us on this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed creating it. And a big thank you to Alex from Side Design Hotel for joining us today. And uh, as usual, we'll see you on the very next episode of Any Line Anytime. If you do have any questions, of course, we'll put LinkedIn descriptions for both Alex and myself on this video. You can go ahead and contact uh, either of us and we'll answer the questions. Or of course, you can just comment on the video and ask your questions, add to the conversation. And we certainly look forward to doing that. So until the very next episode of Any Line, Any Time, wishing you all a fantastic day wherever in the world you may be. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy. We'll see you on the next episode.